Tom Campbell here. If you find something of significant value in our videos, please consider supporting their production through our Patreon account or through a one-time donation. The links are in the description below. Thank you and enjoy the video. Tom, we now have a question from Saul. Thank you, Donna. Uh, Tom, I wonder whether you could uh, comment on something that our mini group uh, discussed last night, and that is that one cannot really attain peace in one's uh, mind and heart until one realizes that things in the world are the way they need to be. Well, I think that is in general a true statement. That, uh, but it's a true statement for for several reasons, and it's connected the way to what I was just saying to Caroline. You know, if you are in a state of being perturbed because things in that world are not the way you want them to be, not the way they should be, because most people won't. Well, you know, if you say, well, they're not the way you want them to be. And I say, yeah, yeah, but it's not just me. They're not the way they should be. If you're in that state, then you're always going to find that you're unhappy. You're stressed. You're annoyed. You have negativity. You have negative thoughts. When you get to the point that you realize that things are just the way they are, that you know, from the viewpoint of everybody is there dealing with their fear, their ego, and their beliefs. That's where they are. They're stuck in struggling with those things. And that everybody is stuck struggling with those things because that's why we're here, to struggle with those things. That's the point of this place. And that we are evolving. We are outgrowing those, that ego, that fear, and those beliefs. We're going beyond that. And each person here is working on that in their own way. Some, like the four of you, are working on it intentionally. Most people have no idea that that's what they're here for and that's what they're working on, but they're working on it just the same, even if they're not aware of it. They're working on growing up as well. Because you're working on it intentionally, you have the possibility of taking bigger steps. They're working on it unintentionally. They're probably going to take micro steps a little bit at a time. But that is just the way it is. And they're in that state of stress and ego and belief and fear. They're in that state because that's where all the choices that they've made today have taken them. We are the sum of all of our choices. That's who we are. That's us. All the choices we've made through all of our lifetimes, through all of this lifetime, that's brought us to this point right now. Well, it's the same with all of them. They're at that point now. And that being at that point now is exactly where they need to be in order to learn the next lesson in order to grow up. That is, you know, the point they brought themselves to. That's their learning point. That's where they are. You know, it's like you talk about a, a third grader. Now, a third grader knows the alphabet. You know, a third grader can read a little bit. A third grader has certain things. But a third grade, grader is not ready for calculus. A third grader is not ready for, you know, the, the great literature. You know, they're, they're not ready for that yet. And you might wish that they were because there's so much, so much there that could be useful to them, but they're just not to the point where they can comprehend that. They're not going to sit down and, and read, uh, you know, a tale between two cities because they're only in third grade and 90% of the words would be outside of their vocabulary. It's just not going to work. It's big ideas that they can't process yet. They wouldn't understand. Well, that's the way it is with people out in the world who, because of their fear, ego, and beliefs, are doing very dysfunctional things. 
they're at the point, they're at the learning point that they need to be. If you push them somehow forward, they'd be out of their depth, they wouldn't understand. If you push them backward, it'd be too easy. They'd already been there and done that. So everybody's just about where they need to be to learn. Now, if the people were like you four who are learning intentionally, well, they'd probably skip up a few steps pretty quickly. But they're not there yet. They haven't gotten to that point where they see that there's something to learn, that, they, that their, their choices are, are important, that their choices are ethical and moral, how they affect other people. They need to see and understand those effects and take them seriously. They don't have that vision yet, so they can't really function there. So that's the way, that's the, that's the, you know, that's the mindset that says everything is just about perfect the way it is. You have to accept it the way it is because that's just where people are in their, in their path of growing up. So, okay, here's somebody and they're, they're rude and they're demanding and they're greedy. Well, that's where they are on their path. It's, they're self-centered. It's all about them what they want, what they need, and they don't really care about other people so much, so they run over other people to get what they want. That's the level that they have grown up to be. They haven't evolved past that. So that's where they are. Now, you might look at them and say, yeah, but that's not where they should be. They should grow, outgrow that and be beyond it. Well, they can't. They have to, everybody has to grow up on their own from the inside out. You can't give them a lecture and expect that to make them grow up. It won't. If you give them a lecture, it'll just make them double down on the dysfunctionality that they have. Because now you're pushing at them, you're poking them and say, you're wrong, you, you shouldn't be this way. And they're going to react to that to say, who the hell are you to tell me I'm wrong? And they'll just double down on whatever uh, mischief they're up to, you see. So you can't really help them by giving them a lecture. You have to help them help themselves. That's the only thing you can do. And that is not an easy thing. The, the less grown you are, the harder it is to get help from somebody else because the more self-centered you are and the more self-centered you are, you already know everything. <laughs> you, you, can't, you don't want help from anybody else. Everybody else needs help but you. The more self-centered you are, the more perfect you are already. So it's just the where we are. And the good news is, is that we are, as a species, humanity, we are growing up some. We are getting more aware of other people. We are becoming kinder, gentler, more caring. Slowly, no doubt, and it's a very mixed bag among us. There's some that are very much along that, you know, already evolved along that line, others not so much. But as a whole, the average of humanity is getting better over time. You only have to go back three, four, 500 years to see how people treated each other and what they thought of each other to see that that's true. So it is a slow process. And one of the most optimal things you can do in this process is be a good, you know, be a, be someone that others can look at and aspire to be like, be a good example. Because that's one of the ways that we pull up everybody else around us. As we grow up, we tend to pull up other people around us just because of who we are, the way we act, just because of our own kindness and caring makes other people think, oh, kindness and caring is a nice thing. You know, I like that. Maybe I should be more that way. So that's how, we, that's how we grow, a little bit at a time. Every individual has to grow themselves. So it's one individual at a time has to make choices in order to be, you know, higher quality individual. So in that way, it is what it is because we are who we are. And there isn't any way to make it better other than what we're doing right now letting other people stew in their own juice. Let, it, let them, you know, there's sticks and carrots in this learning process. 
the sticks are that if you're negative, you'll create negative around yourself. Your life will be negative. You'll be unhappy. You'll be struggling all the time. You'll always be upset. You'll have ulcers. You know? <laughs> you'll, you'll just be an unhappy, un, you know, person that's, that's full of negativity. So that's the, that's the stick. And the carrot is that if you're nice and pleasant and helpful and caring, life becomes more fun, more enjoyable. So there is a carrot and stick process going on. It's just we humans are pretty dumb mules. You know, we're, we're pretty slow animals. We, we get hit with that stick over and over and over again. And we look up and go, huh, something's wrong here. And we go right back and do more of it. We're kind of slow to learn, but that's just the way we are. It's a slow process. But the more individuals can grow up to be good examples, the more we pull other people up with us, just the people we interact with. And the more that people devolve into fear, well, they drag everybody around them down. They help make everybody else more fearful. So it's this big struggle, right, between good and evil, between, you know, uh, being positive and being negative that's going on all the time, and we're part of it. But, yes, I would agree. You see it. It is just the way it is. Can't be any different because that's the way we are. It could be different if we were different, but the only way we can be different is to change who we are. And that has to be from the inside out. It can't be by lecture or by decree. It has to be by the inside out. Even if you pass rules that say you must be nice, well, you have a lot of people that will start acting nice then because they don't want to go to jail. But that won't mean that they will be nice. They'll just act nice, back to this acting rather than being. You know, we, we learned that, what, in, in the last uh, 30 or 40 years. You know, we looked at our culture, and uh, we, you know, back with uh, Martin Luther King, and we decided racism was a very bad thing. And because our culture said that's a bad thing, people who were racist just kept quiet. They didn't become non-racist. They just kept quiet because it wasn't cool anymore to be racist. So they kept it. And then when it was allowed to come out again and people were saying, hey, being racist is cool too. Well, suddenly, you know, everybody looks around and say, God, we thought we were past that. You know, didn't we outgrow that like, you know, 25, 30 years ago? Well, no, we just pretended to outgrow that. We didn't really outgrow it. We just acted better. So, see, it doesn't help. You can pass rules and, and, and demand better behavior. And part of our, our being civil, you know, our, our sense of what's polite does that for us. But that produces a very thin veneer of, of culture, a thin veneer of civility over people. But as soon as the going gets tough, that thin veneer kind of crumbles and what's really under the hood comes out roaring. So what we have to do is really grow up, change who we are, not just act better. So, yes, I agree. You're always going to be upset and angry with the world, with humanity, with events, with the politics, you know, with everything. You're going to be always shaking your fist and and irritated until you realize that it is just the way it is because that's it can't be any other way because that's how we are and we aren't any other way and when we change it'll change and when we change all those things that are dysfunctional like politics and and corporate uh greed and that sort of thing they'll just automatically change as we grow up that stuff will just fall away and go away it's just there because we are the way we are it doesn't make us that way. We make it that way. It is a reflection of us. We're not a reflection of it. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, more specifically, what we are talking about last night is uh, all the suffering taking place in the world, the wars and, and so on. Would you say that the statement, things are the way they need to be, also extends to the suffering out there in the world in general. Yeah, well, you know, to say they need to be is a, 
isn't a way that I would prefer to express it. I'd say it's just the way it is. You know, depends on how you word you 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 process the word need. You know, if you say, well, need, that means it has to be like that. Well, no, it doesn't have to be like that. We could grow up. People could realize that's just dysfunctional, you know, that they'd rather have the carrot than the stick. But that doesn't happen. It, isn't, it doesn't happen by force. It doesn't happen by any way other than people growing up. So, yes, let's say, you know, the, you know, the, the, the league of, of uh, right thinkers gets together and forces everybody else to go along with what the league of right thinkers wants. All right, so no more wars, no more curse words, no more, you know, greed. No, we just make a, hmm, all this stuff has to quit. All right, but if it's done under force or under threat, it doesn't help. All it does is make it more civilized, but it doesn't make it better. As soon as that force is removed, it goes right back to the way it was. So in that sense, it's not the way we need, you know, to say the war, we, we need those wars. And of course, we don't need wars in that sense of the word need, but they're there because it's the way we are. We can't help the fact that there are wars because there are people who want to overrun others. They, you know, control, power, force. That's the coin of our realm. That's what makes things move in our reality. Control, power, force. So as long as control, power, and force is the, is the key mover among humanity, then we're going to have dysfunction and we're going to have wars because wars are just one control, power, force, button, up, button heads with another control, power, force. That ends up in war. So they're, they're inevitable, I would say, given that humanity is the way it is, that we need it, that's not a good way of expressing it. Right. We, might say, we might say we deserve it in a sense that it's because that's the way we are, that we deserve it, perhaps. But uh, And then somebody would say, yeah, well, other people deserve it, but I don't. And, well, you have to realize you're part of something bigger, and you're, you, know, you don't live by yourself on an island. So until everybody grows up, you know, you're going to have problems for everyone. Go ahead, when, I use, when, when I use the word need, uh, I, what I meant is to, to learn from. But I, I think you, you pointed out the distinction really well. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Yeah, we need it to learn from. Yeah, you could say need that way. But uh, I know a lot of people would, would just be like fingernails down the blackboard to say, well, we need those wars. <laughs> They'd go, why? We don't need wars. Nobody needs wars, you know, but. Yes, in the sense that it just is the way we are, and because it is, that's our feedback for growing up. That is our feedback. That's every, you know, people who act negatively, they create negativity, and that's their feedback. They have to live with that negativity. But they'll be happy to live with it as long as they win. <laughs> that's the culture we've got. That's the control power force culture. So, yes, it's unfortunate, but, you know, Saul, that's, the, that's also the answer to how can you be a joyful, happy person in a world that's full of negativity and greed and nastiness? See, that's the same question, just turned around the other way. Well, you have to look at that greed and nastiness and not be upset by it. Not be angered by it. You have to say that is the way it is. Can't be helped. People have to learn. They learn by the by their consequences. Okay. Well, some of these consequences take uh, you know four or five generations, you know, take four or five decades before the consequences show up. But there's consequences. You know, we're still dealing with the consequences of what the eighteen hundreds. Um, you know, Europe going out and conquering the rest of the world. Those consequences are still here, bubbling up, creating problems. Goodness, that's centuries ago. And the consequences of that are still rolling out. 
So it's a learning from history, I guess, is helpful. But you can be happy. You can find joy, even though you're in a world full of dysfunction. It's okay. You know, it is how it is. You accept it. That doesn't mean you have to, you know, go, you know, snuggle up to it. <laughs> you can avoid it. You can stay away from it. You can be smart to get out of its grip as much as you can, but you have to accept that it is us. And that should not make you unhappy. If you are making your choices all positively, then you live in a happy space, probably around happy people. And that's good. And if other people are suffering other places, it's unfortunate and it's sad. And you can feel that sadness, but you accept that is necessary for our growth, right? It's, I shouldn't again I say necessary. It's, it's just the way it is. Can't be helped. So getting shaking your fist and getting upset is not helpful. Which is yet one other way to look at it. You can look at it from where are you? Are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution? If you are shaking your fist and angry, you people stop that fighting. You people need to sit down and talk to each other instead. You know, if you're angry and upset, you actually are part of the problem even though you see yourself as being on the right side because you're being upset and angry causes a reaction in the people you're angry with to double down on what they're doing. Your anger doesn't help them see a bigger picture. Your anger makes them defensive, you see? So, if you look at it from the point, am I part of the solution or am I part of the problem? Well, education is good. Try to help those people see that there's a better way. That's good, but not done through anger. It has to be done without the anger. It has to be done positively. So you can be positive, live positively, find joy, be happy, and be part of the solution. Because you talk to people, you, you advocate for a better way, but not by being angry. If you advocate for a better way by getting angry, you're actually part of the problem. So that's another way to look at the, you know, we're looking at the same thing, like from three or four different perspectives. And that's another perspective to, to look at it. Are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution? And if you're negative, you're part of the problem, no matter what side you're on because your negativity isn't going to help. As long as it's force against force, it's just gonna keep on the way it is. Now, that's like what, Gan what Gandhi showed when you know he and his friends all showed up in front of all those British rifles and said, you know, peace, brother. We're, we're gonna do what we have to do. You do what you have to do. And they didn't meet them force on force. It's not, well, let's go get those guys. But the power of being positive is immense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next question is from Nathan. Please go ahead, Nathan. So I have a question around um, image and the feedback process. So part of how we grow up is we get the feedback from our choices that arise from who we are. And I observe in myself um, that feedback, if I'm lucky, is integrated about 5% of the time. It's like, ah, I really received that feedback. I'm going to learn. And otherwise, my ego is very good at being like, Oh, like, I'll tell you why you're okay, or, you know, <laughs> you know, butterfly, and I don't even, like, see the feedback, and it's, like, it's very interesting um, how refined the system is at, like, it's got, I mean, I'm in one of the best trainers ever, and I'm, like, picking my nose, and, like, you know, <laughs> not even, like, really receiving the feedback, right, and yeah. there's something for me around 
trying to put it in language like like it's it's like my precious image you know that i got back here and if i really got the feedback it's like oh it like shatter this like precious little image that i have of of myself and and so um it it feels too much for my intellect to say Ah, so the right answer is I will take out my image and smash it with a hammer and I will receive all the feedback, you know? So it's, there's something around like, could you speak to how, um, like that feedback is a positive thing, like to really, to see like, um, wow, the misery that I create for myself or others, like then other parts of me want to go, oh no, and I start like pulling my hair and then it becomes like another functional on top of this functional thing. <laughs> and it's like, oh, positive thing, you know? So could you, uh, could you speak to that, please? Yeah, well, that is just, that's a good description of what I call pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. <laughs> it's it's uh, not an exact science. It's something that takes, you know, a fair amount of time. And yes, that ego is so good at justifying whatever it is you do that when you look at that feedback and you see it and okay, you did something and uh, you upset somebody, you know, and they're unhappy and they're crying or something. And your ego says, well, they needed that. They, they needed to feel the seriousness of it and, and think about it for a while. So maybe they'll learn from it, you know, and I'm a good, I'm a good person because I helped them with that lesson. <laughs> we use our, in, you know, we, we use our intellect to, justify everything we do. So we don't see the feedback. The feedback comes to us. Well, it's there, but we turn it into pats on the back. Oh, yeah, that was okay. I, I made her cry, but it would probably be good for her. She'll learn something, maybe. Maybe I'll have to make her cry again before she really learns it. But life is hard. Lessons are hard. And, you know, sometimes the teacher has to be tough, tough love, you know. So, yeah, we're really good at that. You're right. And to see through, you know, that's why I say, you know, you should always be skeptical, but the person you should be most skeptical of is yourself. Because, yes, we're very clever at, at making ourselves be right and making ourselves be just the way we need to be. And therefore, the, the feedback that says, you need to change, that wasn't very nice. You could have approached that differently, you know, uh, telling other people how to be, you know, being somebody else's teacher all the time, like I know, you know, and you don't. So I'll be your teacher. That That is just arrogance. So, yes, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps is a very uh, haphazard process that you get in little little snippets and little pieces where you kind of see through it. And you look right through that ego and say, oh, no, I, I really shouldn't have done that. That was not good. For Then you just try hard not to do it the next time. And you'll end up doing it the next time anyway. And then you try harder not to do it the next time. It's just a slow process, Nathan. There's nothing, there's no way to quickly just see it and get it and grow up and be it and make it a, a fast process. That's just hard to do not impossible it's just hard to do because we are we have we have honed and and developed that ego to instantly jump in and excuse whatever it is we do and to redefine whatever it is we do and whatever it is we think as necessary and right and if it hurts other people well it's their lesson to learn that's just the way we are. We don't see it at all, even if it hurts them. We just, we don't really understand what's going on with them. We just said, oh, they'll get over it. You know, we don't really appreciate their feeling, but they're feeling. The one way to help you with that, I guess, is to learn to connect to other people in a way that you do feel their feelings. You do feel their emotions and their feelings, and that you are always skeptical of your own justifications of you being right, true, good, and wonderful all the time. You know, you, you get skeptical of that. And 
When you do, actually, it, you feel better. It, it takes a load off. Because before, you know, right now, most people, we're just juggling this stuff all the time. You know, we're telling ourselves all the stuff we want to hear. And it just gets in our way of growing up. And if we don't grow up, then our life is full of negativity. If we grow up, there isn't any negativity in our life. And it does not depend on other people. We think, oh, if I could just get my significant other to be the way I want, to do the things I want, then my life would be almost perfect. No, it wouldn't be that way. Even if your significant other, even if you had a magic wand and could touch them with the magic wand and they did everything you wanted and said everything just the way you wanted it, it wouldn't fix you any. And you'd be just the same. Maybe worse. Maybe worse. You see, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't help you grow up any. So this idea that we need to teach other people how to be more like we want them to be is just a really wrong idea. It almost never works. Now, could we give them a safe place? Could we give them the love and the care and the safety they need to change themselves? Well, perhaps that's something we could do, but there's no guarantee in that. You know, they may not they may not be ready to change yet. They may not be close to the point of seeing their own fear, ego, and beliefs. But couldn't hurt to give somebody the opportunity, particularly if maybe it'll take a year or two or three or four or never. But what have you lost? Nothing. What have you gained? Oh, you've gained a lot. You've gained a lot because you've gotten rid of most of your ego in that process of giving them that space. You've stopped complaining. You stopped whining. You stopped trying to fix them. You see? So it's a win. No matter what happens, no matter what they do, it's a win for you if you can if you can do that. So that's the way to look really at relationships. It's not that that other person needs to change. And how am I going to teach them? <laughs> it's that you just need to accept that that's the way it is and give them all the freedom they need to make that change. Because to making changes requires courage. Changing who you are requires courage. And if you're embattled, you know, if you're if you circled the wagons and you're you're trying to stave off the enemy, then that's not a good time to, you know, grow up, make changes. You know, you don't grow up then. Given a piece of tranquility and peace and love and people care for you. Now it's much easier to see your errors than when people are sniping at you and trying to push you around. Then your errors of sniping back and pushing back are all justified. So it's a it, pointing yourselves up by your bootstraps is a slow, tedious, piece by piece realization and change. So the a problem that many people have is they see it, the they see the problem, but taking a year or two years to change it seems impossible. You know they want to change it now, this week. Next week, I'll be different. And it doesn't usually work that way. It isn't that easy. But take the long term, like I was telling Caroline, take the long term. Change it just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just one little thing around the edges. Just stop doing one small thing that you know is part of the problem. And let everything else go for a while. Then do another small thing. And, you know, all those small things over time add up to be some big things. Progress is more made that way than it is by taking giant leaps. And if we always focus on the giant leap and then we're always kind of annoyed and upset that it's not working, then that creates a problem all of its own. So taking small steps and being, you know, just growing one little bit at a time is, is uh, a much better way to approach it. So don't get frustrated with yourself. I could hear that frustration in there, you know. I see it, and I'm trying, but it doesn't seem to work. At least not always. Yeah, that's life. That's the way it is. Just keep trying, pushing, and don't be upset with yourself. As long as you're making progress, that's good. Don't uh, have to make it all in once. Thank you, Tom. And 
And would it be okay, Tom and Don, if there's a follow-up from this? Sure. Is there, um, I think I just answered my own question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't people on the floor that they really do. Yeah. So it's always yeah. good when you can answer your yeah. own question. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've been taking a lot of time with the questions this time, you know, because the questions are questions that basically affect lots and lots of people. Of all the people that are going to watch this, let's say someday, you know, 100,000 people watch this video, probably 95% of them will have the problems we've been talking about today. You know, the idea of having to live in a, in a nasty place and still find joy in your life. Uh, just these are, these are such systemic problems that I'm taking a long time to, to discuss them because the longer people think about them, the more little ahas creep in here and there as, as, as they go. So this has just been one of those fireside chats that we're, we're into really basic fundamental stuff of that everybody's struggling with, particularly now in the time we live in right now, there's just so much of this that uh, it's worth taking the time to go over it you know, very slowly and meticulously and take time with it because the problems you're talking about are problems that most everybody is struggling with. Thank you, Tom, for, for taking the time with us. And what what was going through my mind is if I'm working on the little things and there are big parts of me that have big fear and they're going around in the dark even, I'm not even fully intellectually aware, I'm I'm sort of flinging my hands around and Jonathan's just hanging out being himself. And, you know, I like pop him in the face just by like <laughs> who I am. And it's like, Oh, the temptation is it's like, Oh, like I want to like control that part of myself, like get that big fear and control it. So I don't oh. hurt my new friend. And, and it's like, Oh, but I need to do the little things. So the question was, is there some level of, acceptance or allowance that I'm just going to walk around bopping people in the nose without even trying. <laughs> and, and it's like, well, that doesn't feel right either. And it's like, and then it was like, you just have to forgive yourself and keep working. Yeah, like, do what you, you can. Bop people in the face. It's like, work on the small stuff, forgive yourself and just keep working. As long as you're making progress, as long as over time you're making progress, that's about as much as you, you know, as anyone can ask for. You're making progress. You're doing the best you can, as quickly as you can, and you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. Every time you bop somebody accidentally and then you become aware of it, oh, well, that's a learning point. You've just learned something. Be a little more careful of that next time. Well, you're going to turn around and bop somebody else the very next day. Well, think about it. Be, you say, uh uh-uh, I need to be careful about that. And all of those at about the 10th or 20th time, you tell yourself, I need to be careful about that. You'll start doing it less and less. You'll still do it sometimes, but you'll do it less. And that's the point. You're making progress. So that's the point. You're making progress. Mm -hmm. You're probably not going to change yourself, you know, in a week, in a month, in a year, some. But, you know, look back. This is why I tell people, look back. Say, who were, you know, what were you like? Five years ago, what were you like 10 years ago? You know, who was the Nathan of, of 10 years back? What did they understand? How were they? How did they see the world? And you'll probably look back and say, wow, you know, I've changed a lot in 10 years. Well, sure. You see, that's what it takes. 10 years from now, you'll look back and say the same thing. That's the way it works. So it just, you know. It's slow, but over time, you change a lot, even though you might not look back any over the last 10 years and see some seminal point where suddenly you grew up a whole lot. Probably not. It's probably just a whole bunch of little steps that you're just more grown up now. You're less self-centered than you used to be. You're used to not even be aware of any of these things of bopping people. You bop people all the time then and weren't even aware of it. Now at least you're aware of it some of the time. That's progress. That's good. Just keep working at it. Yeah, forgive yourself, right? Just it takes time. Do the best you can.
Tom Campbell here. I and MBT Events hope you like this video. We now have well over a thousand hours of free video on this user-friendly, ad-free YouTube channel. Though these videos are free to our viewers, they represent many thousands of hours in production and editing, and many thousands of dollars invested in video and audio equipment, along with the required computers and software to store and process the raw video into finished products. So far, all of this content has been funded directly out of our own pockets. Be assured, we will always continue to do what we can. It's our life, our purpose, a labor of love that we will continue to pursue as best we can. However, those pockets are not as deep as they used to be. Thus, we are now seeking to augment our resources with support from our viewers. If you find something of significant value in our videos, please consider supporting their production through our Patreon account or through a one-time donation. The links are in the description below. Thank you.